preview show. Ten games on the slate for our coverage this week here on the Williamson Source. we got plenty of predictions to get to. So let's start at Dixon County at Franklin. Joe Critchlow completed 16 of 20 passes for 159 yards and two touchdowns in their first game. Malik Grimes scored twice on seven carries this game against Clarksville Northeast. And Bryce Smealham, we said he's going to have a good year. He led the rushing attack with 71 yards and a touchdown in the first half. Franklin defense only allowed five first downs and, of course, zero points in, the route, in their route of Clarksville Northeast. Dixon... They put up 27 points against Columbia last week, but gave up 40 to a team who just who scored just 12 a week before. So our pick for that game is the Franklin Rebels to improve to 2-0. Brentwood Bruins at Centennial. Of course, we know the struggles Brentwood has had at the start of this season. That's a tough schedule, though. CPA and then, of course, Blackman. Two really tough teams having to play them back-to-back. -back. They're now in district play, and it doesn't get much easier. Centennial has looked impressive in their two wins. Deion Sanders and Emmanuel Hall both have three touchdowns on the season. Sanders with 137 yards on the ground. Emmanuel Hall 186 yards uh, receiving. 20, that's 23.3 yards per catch. And Brentwood giving up 31 and 42 points in their first two games. Centennial might be putting up some numbers on the scoreboard again this week. We got Centennial going to 3-0 on the season. Independence traveling to Summit. Independence uh, was rescued from, by Don Childress's game-winning touchdown at Marshall County last week for a 31-25 win. Summit played Page, and they played a smart game. They kept it close. They kept it within one possession until finally Page was able to run away with it. And they also had our play of the week, so maybe Brian Coleman might have a few more tricks up his sleeve. But really, it won't matter. Independence should win this game. They're one of the favorites to win District 11. Summit might be able to keep it close. As Coach Coleman said, he wants drives to last a whole quarter if possible. And if they can do that, if they can keep it close, you never know. But Independence is a strong football team this year, and, and they should get the win. So Spring Hill, they're 2-0 on the season, off to a good start. They've already doubled their win count from last year. They're playing a 2-0 White House Heritage team. And Spring Hill, led by their quarterback, their dual-threat quarterback, Tylen Odin, who has been able to lead his team down the field with completing passes and rushing. He's playing a White House team that has two blowout wins, a 42-7 win over East Hickman, a 41-21 win over Clarksville Academy. And Spring Hill last week had to hang on to beat Mount Pleasant as Mount Pleasant had a furious comeback towards the end of that game. But still, Spring Hill's 2-0. We'd like to see him go to 3-0, and we got them picked to do that this week. And we won't stop picking uh, Spring Hill until they prove us uh, wrong. Marshall County traveling to Page. They lost, of course, on the Dom Childers touchdown we talked about earlier. The Tigers a, with a balanced offense. How about this? 35 rushes and 36 passes in their last game. We've seen Page twice. We know what they have, but they struggled against Summit early on. They were trailing most of the first quarter. They end up taking the lead on a touchdown. Uh, so where's their offense coming from? Well, that's Michael Roberts. 369 all-purpose yards, four touchdowns. It's going to be a close game. I, I fully expect this one to be close. Our guys at the Williamson Source have predicted, and, and you know, it's funny, we picked against Page earlier in the season and they won. So it might be, uh, I don't know, it might be a, a good thing, a good omen that uh, our staff has picked Marshall County. But again, I think everybody said when they, send, when they sent in their picks, I really don't know. This could go either way. And the, the pick was Marshall County to beat Page. We'll have to see. I mean, Page has come away with two wins. It played, it was a sloppy game, but that's exactly the way Summit wanted to play. So it was, we couldn't really tell a whole lot from uh, that contest last week. And we'll see if Page can improve to 3-0. It would be a great start for the Patriots. Stewart County at Fairview. Fairview lost a heartbreaker last week at Camden Central. Junior quarterback Hunter Zimmerman had a great game in the loss. Uh, he's got an arm on him. And he also has a receiver to throw to, so that helps in uh, Drayvon Moore. Stewart County scored 61 points in their last game, 24 in the first quarter. The Rebels are 1-1, one one, but we know Fairview's no easy place to go and get a win. And we're going to pick Fairview to get the win over Stewart County. I want to see it. That game might be close as well. I'll be there, and uh, we'll have a nice report for it after the game. Father Ryan Brentwood Academy was nearly our game of the week again. Father Ryan was our game of the week last week. They played two straight really close games. The one against Overton, then of course uh, BGA last week, that Overton game, it took a, a last second touchdown. Then they had a hold off BGA for a 28-20 win last Friday. This could be their third straight close game and it's against Brentwood Academy. So what a huge game. Uh, Thomas Swafford seemed to fill in just fine for Dawson Knox as the Eagles soared to a 43-13 win. 
This was another tough one to pick, really tough. We picked against Father Ryan last week and we were wrong. Don't want to do that again. So, Father Ryan, Fighting Irish, we're picking them to get the win at Brentwood Academy. And what a win it would be for Father Ryan uh, to take down a tough team like BA. BGA at Good Pasture, we just talked about the Wildcats. They nearly came all the way back to beat Father Ryan at Father Ryan. And, that was, and as we're finding out, this is a very tough and talented Father Ryan football team. Uh, Good Pasture fell to FRA 21 to seven. Uh, they, scored, they, uh, they scored the first touchdown of the game after recovering a fumble inside the red zone and weren't able to really move the ball much after that. So this one, we're taking the Wildcats of BGA to improve to two and one on the year. Boyd Buchanan at FRA, we just talked about the Panthers of Franklin Road Academy, how they scored 21 unanswered points to get the win over Good Pasture last week. Spence Jones has shown he can score with his arm and, and running the ball. Uh, the defense gave up 49 points in week one and only seven in week two. And then that's actually zero in the last three quarters. So some improvement there on the defensive side of the ball for the Panthers. Boyd Buchanan coming off a 23 point loss and it's their very first road game of the season. And that all signs point to an FRA victory and them improving to two and one. So that would take us to our game of the week. This is gonna be a packed house. Uh, it's gonna be tough finding some parking spots. You might, might wanna get here early. Uh, that, that whole uh, way section is going to be full, and I would imagine the home side just as full of people st standing room only. Let's just say that. Standing room only on Friday for Giles County and CPA. It is going to be a wild atmosphere, one of the best ones of the season so far. And we got a chance to talk to head coach Ingo Martin. Here's what he had to say about how his Lions are preparing for what should be the rowdiest atmosphere they've seen so far this year. CPA has cruised through their first two wins. But this week, they have prepared for their first true test of 2014. Coach Ingo Martin reminded his players that environments like the one they'll see tomorrow night don't happen that often. You know, the biggest thing is uh, once the whistle blows to start the game, um, it all happens between the lines and, and all that other stuff kind of kind of fades away. And uh, I know Giles County is the exact same way. They've got a, probably the nicest stadium in the state down there um, in Pulaski. And um, we think our stadium is pretty nice uh, here. So the atmosphere should be good. Um, you know, fans are going to be on top of us. But bottom line is that our kids got to go out and execute and uh, hopefully out hit them. Both of these teams participated and lost in a state championship last season which only adds to the hype this game already has. You know, we're, we're excited about it. Um, obviously, we, uh, we've known them uh, since last year, gotten, uh, gotten a little bit used to how they play, um, been able to watch them last year and this year on film. And, uh, you know, we're excited about the opportunity. They're a very good football team with a lot of tradition and uh, very well coached. So it should be, a, uh, should be a fun night Friday. Giles County quarterback Trevor Holder has 170 yards passing and 180 yards rushing with two touchdowns. Add running back Jordan Tucker's 4.2 yards per carry, and there's no question this team can move the football. Their quarterback's very athletic. He uh, can make plays with his feet and his arm, and um, anytime you got that as a, uh, as a defensive coordinator, um, you've got your hands full. And Coach Taylor, our, our defensive coordinator, is uh, preparing all week, and um, you know we'll be hopefully ready for, uh, for what they're bringing. The 2-0 Bobcats played a close game in week one, beating Lincoln County 21-13. CPA starters haven't had to play four quarters yet. In the last two games, you know, won pretty easily, and you know, your starters haven't had to play four quarters. This week could be the first week that we see them play a full game. How does that play a factor into this one? Uh, you know, all of our kids prepare each week. Um, they prepare to play, and uh, the bottom line is we got to be in shape. We got to be ready to go. Um, with with the hot um, temperatures and the humidity, um, you know, it'll be a factor. But the bottom line is that you know we've been uh, we've been working out since uh, since June, and hopefully we're ready for uh, for the contest on Friday. This is another game. There's, a, I think the last two weeks, with the exception of a few, have been pretty easy to pick. And I don't want to say pretty easy, but they've been, they've been easier than this. This week has been so tough, and it, we just know we, got, we had some good scores last week, a lot of people getting 11 out of 12 right, 10 out of 12 right. This week, it could be all over the place. Uh, a lot of guesses, because you really don't know. You know that, the, uh, the, like we said in the report, the Bobcats have some pretty uh, good wins and have been able to put up a lot of points, but so has CPA. CPA hasn't had uh, their team have to play f uh, four quarters yet. We'll have to see how much of a difference that makes. Uh, but having seen CPA play a couple times, knowing the weapons they have, knowing th their quarterback situation, knowing the wide receivers that they can throw to, and knowing how well their defense has played, it's hard to pick against the Lions. So that's who we're going with. CPA to win our game of the week right here. Again, folks, get here early. It's going to be a packed house. It's going to be uh, standing room only attendance. 
and it's going to be a fun game to watch. And now to our Jack in the Box, Athletes of the Week. We'll start off with our Female Athlete of the Week from Brentwood Academy. It's Macy McKay. She scored three goals against FRA in their 4-2 win on Tuesday. And anytime you get a hat trick in a close game against a good school, that's deserving of Athlete of the Week. So Macy McKay, our Female Athlete of the Week. And now to our Jack in the Box, Male Athlete of the Week. And that's FRAs. And they're connected. It's weird. It's how it's... It's weird how that works. FRA's Keeling Hunter, inside linebacker from Franklin Road Academy. He had 12 tackles, three tackles for a loss, and one sack, and his team's win over Good Pasture. A game, I'm not going to call it a must. It wasn't a must win. It's too early for all of that. But it was a game they really couldn't afford to lose as they got down 7-0. Uh, they're able to battle back in a big game out of Keeling Hunter and as the FRA defense stopped Good Pasture from even getting a sniff of the end zone for three quarters as they were able to win it 21-7. So hats off to Keeling Hunter and to Macy McKay as they are as they are our week one Jack in the Box Athletes of the Week. If you have someone that you think should be nominated for the Jack in the Box Athlete of the Week, you can email me, steve.peak at williamsandsource.com or sports at williamsandsource.com or you can tweet it at me at Steve WS Sports. I think, I think that's right. Did I get my own Twitter handle correct? I did, I did. Okay. Or at Williamson SRC for the Williams Source. And uh, do that. And be sure to also look out for the Jack in the Box people. We're going to have some stuff to hand out to our fans of the week and other folks that are, that are, in, te that are in attendance. It's getting a little rough. As uh, It's going to be another fun Friday night. The games are going to start meaning more as we're now in the district play. Expect some huge crowds. Expect some, some of these rivalries, some of the passionate fans showing up. We're excited. I'm sure you guys are too. And we'll see you Friday night on a wrap-up show.